Um, I certainly wouldn't recommend trying to do it in a residential area. Uh, I don't know how uh, the guys do it, you know. I'm, I'm sure there's so much nimbyism goes on around this bloody world. Make total respect for all you truckies out there. Holy hell, you guys work hard. This is, I mean, this has tested my patience. Right, Johnny and I have come up with this concept. Uh, what do you reckon, John? Looks good, mate. Pretty good, eh, mate? So we've got the pivot point here. This is going to be on the chain drive. Operation uh, Yard Trolley, we're at the stage where we're going to flip it over because we're going to change the front wheel, the front bogey, we're going to change it around so it'll steer like a trailer. Flip it over on its, on its uh, chassis and we'll be able to pull all the wheels off and do all the work that we need to do. Welcome back everyone. Uh, January 2018, had this truck chassis all excited, ripped everything off it and uh, removed all the steering mechanisms. So we also had to remove the rear wheels off, the dual wheels there and free up the brakes. But I've left the front brakes on so I'm gonna have some sort of control. But uh, although I didn't film us turning the front axle around, it was then reversed around so that it would facilitate an easier steering mechanism. And uh, that's what this uh, beginning of this video is gonna be all about. So welcome back to the mold guys. Oh, we've racked our brains with this uh, steering mechanism on the on the truck and uh, Johnny's down here. We think we've got it worked out, but uh, luckily I took a photo of a trailer I saw down in Adelaide and uh, it had a, a like a centre drawbar and I'm going to go with that same principle, maybe with some supports on it. But uh, yeah, let's have a look at what we've come up with. How about a fixed plate, you bolt to that, that yeah. comes out here. Yeah, that's what it And then we be. fix it. Yeah, a ball on it. Yeah, some sort of a ball. And fix a ball onto that. If that's going to move... One way or the other way. Yes, yes. It's got to push here on your two plates. Yep, that's right. If you have the plates out here even, yep. well, have actually, if you have a big C channel that comes from there all the way to here, yeah. and it's going gonna, it's gonna to turn. It it's is. got to turn. It is turning. It is going to turn. So this is the setup. I've got it jacked up on my um, little pallet jack here. Um, yeah, it's a bit hard to explain. I'm, I'm going for a, like a long straight drawbar effect. Because I've got to move this chain drive here, it has to move transversely along the axle or parallel to the axle. We've got to come up with a pivot point, uh, which will be a coupling of some description on the actual axle of the truck. And then as that uh, turns, it'll operate the parallel uh, chain drive and hopefully um, move it. But I've got a bit of welding to do, I think. Yeah, righto. You're probably thinking, why the hell did he cut the steering wheel and the steering box and the um, rack and pinion or whatever it was that was on there off the, the chassis? Well, I got a bit excited. So I came up with this system where uh, I made an upright that then sat down onto a plate that was um, clipped over the top of the axle and then that would carry a pintle hook or some sort of a hook arrangement. But um, the issue with that was that when I put it all back together again, I found that it, um, it was going to restrict the suspension of the springs uh, because it was going to be welded to the actual chassis itself, so thereby not allowing any sort of suspension. Now, I don't have a particularly long way to get to the water, uh, but I do have quite a steep driveway, and it would have twisted the chassis as we uh, rolled it out behind a backhoe or a tow truck or the like. So. Um, by mounting this piece of steel or welding it to the chassis, it was going to restrict a lot of movement and it did take a bit of thinking. So we came up with another idea where the, uh, the bottom plate then had a smaller section that allowed independence of the, uh, of the suspension and then that would carry the, uh, the, the hook that I'd ordered uh, previously. So that was my solution and I'm sticking to it. And if, uh, if, if anyone's got any other ideas, um, it's a bit late, but uh, it would have been good at the time, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so we've got Johnny down on the ground here, mate. He likes being down here, don't you, mate? I like going down, Captain. <laughs> What'd you say? You like aye, aye. aye, aye, Captain. Don't over tighten it because it's got to, we've got to move it across. That's all right. Here you go. You've got to undo the clamp anyway. There you go. Right. Once the clamp's undone, she'll. Um... Yep, it'll loosen up. 
So have you have you got your centre line in here? No, not yet. Well, right. you can't really measure off the springs because I don't think they'll be right. No, I've got to measure from the. Well, I do have to measure from the springs because it's the only point I've got. That'll be fine. It doesn't really need a centre point. Aye, aye, Captain. Oh, mate, it's a goer. It's a what? It's a goer. It's, it's a, a goer, goer, mate. It's a goer. It's a goer. That's a real Aussie expression there, Josh. Yeah. There's, your, there's your title of your video. It's, it's, it's a, a beaut. It's a beaut. Yeah, it's a goer. That's a great idea. We're almost level here. That's better. Yeah, that was pretty good. It's, it's just got to go down at the front a little more. All right, I'll just get this nylon. How the hell do you smoke when you're working like that? I could never smoke. It's anymore. a rolly. It's not a. It's not a normal cigarette. So is that right? There's not much smoke coming out. <laughs> and if I'm going to be a deckhand, notice I said deckhand and yeah, not dickhead. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, <laughs> deckhand smoke, mate. <laughs> do they? On deadliest catch. Oh yeah, the <laughs> captain does. Sig. Sig. That'll do. Cigar man, yeah. Awesome. Right, eh? That worked. All right, so I've come up with this idea to test it. Oh, no, I've got uh, Johnny's approval here and Josh's and John. John, John, and John. Easy, easy, easy. Yeah, I think that's the key. I'll tack it all together and then we can just sort of semi test it, I guess. At least you'll make some progress. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right, Johnny and I have come up with this concept. Uh, what do you reckon, John? Looks good, mate. Pretty good, eh, mate? So we've got the pivot point here. This is going to be on the chain drive. Look at that. Pretty good, eh? That's sliding well. Yeah, no, I think we've got the distance right, and, and we've worked out if we pack it here with some circular shims, we can increase the steering even more without breaking anything. So that gives me 45 degrees of turn. It won't quite jackknife. Go, I reckon we should whack it on and give it a go. I reckon now it's cooled off a bit. Yeah, bolt we'll bolt it onto our steering column. So this is the uh, the base or the mount for the tow ball, uh, the towing hook or the pinto hook I'm going to put on it. So yeah, it's pretty substantial. <laughs> Weighs about 30 kilos. arrived the courier's just arrived i love these internet un unboxings i think it's absolutely hilarious that we do all this unboxing on the internet i mean what a absolute crack up anyway this is it i'm doing my unboxing <laughs> it's my uh 10 ton pintle hook that's uh gonna hopefully be enough oh that'll do that'll do the job so yes that'll be good so it's obviously a Oh yes, here we go. So we can um, bolt that onto my truck, tow it from that. Pretty happy with that idea. Here's the uh, the bracket or the tow point that I've um, I've fabricated up, and this pintle hook is going to mount right here. So you can sort of see what I'm getting to, and I'll have it mounted in about ten minutes, hopefully, if I can get these holes drilled. I've done my um, my pilot holes. And uh, yes, that's going to be spot on. So that'll go that way on the truck.
Make total respect for all you truckies out there. Holy hell, you guys work hard. This is, I mean, this has tested my patience, this. But I think I'm there. So here's the completed uh, pintle hook setup. All basically in place, just gotta tighten the, the hook itself up. Had to take it off again to get the U-bolt in, but um, yeah, no, absolutely spot on. Okay, before you all start criticizing me, this isn't the final prototype. This is just a way of me testing this hook. It's actually not a way of testing the hook, it's a way of me testing the, um, the steering of the hook. So. Hundred and fifty bucks later, I've arrived home with this uh, very, very heavy piece of uh, seventy-five mil box section RHS. It's a five mil thick one. I'm going to build some bracing of it. This is going to form the drawbar for my uh, for my rig, and uh, get uh, going to have a big pintle, three-inch pintle ring on each end, a big six-ton ring uh, on each end, welded, bolted as well, probably, and uh, that'll form the basis of my steering and my tow ball. They got a bit of weight to them, I'll tell you. They're bloody uh, pretty serious. So uh, look at this. Oh, <laughs> mate, that's about 20 kilos of steel in that thing. That is a serious piece of stuff. <laughs> um. Let's see how this baby fits, eh? Dragged in the big guns here. Got Luke and Wayne. Do your back in, Josh. 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 That'll do. That'll do. Oh, good man. No, it comes up a bit more, mate. It's straight to How do I know when it's Right, well, it's back underneath. <laughs> you get the idea. Now it's uh, 
yeah, taking up a lot of room now, but it's in the right position, so at least it's in here and out of the way now. I don't have to worry too much about it. Right, uh, so after about um, 20 minutes, half an hour of struggling on my own, I've moved it over, I've got it out of the way. I've still got good access down through the side here to uh, access my compressor and the works, but it's under here. Um, I'm gonna do a test lift on the boat um, once I get the bulkheads in, I don't want to go mucking around with it just yet, but uh, all the framework's done, the truck's in here, these big uh, uh, cross beams have got to go on the acros, and I think uh, I'm set to go. Basically, I've just got to get the steering finished and we're done. So the time has come to put the wheels back on the deck mould. Um, the reason why I'm going to need the wheels is because I need to get this level when I flip this deck mould over and I've been waiting for a time when there's no cars here in the car park so these big wheels here I've, um, I've welded a new base onto them and I've just got to clean it up and, and basically going to tack them on at least get them in place and then I'll come back and do a good job welding them but uh, very important I put these on because they're going to sit on some hardwood blocks here and I'm going to level it up down here on the ground uh, to put the second tent up uh, that I've got that I've had for about eight months which I was supposed to have this up about four or five months ago but hasn't happened things get delayed here on the mould <laughs> okay so these wheels I cut off uh, about two years ago when I was up in Queensland with my bro Jimmy um, you can see where they used to fit there I've welded an even stronger base onto them here uh, about two months ago I left them sitting out in the rain it's not going to matter because they're going to get rusty anyway but I'm, I'm going to clean up these surfaces and weld them back in places. Another one goes up here, and another one over here, and another one here. So I'm gonna have four molds, uh, uh, sorry, I'm gonna have four wheels that's gonna uh, form the basis of the, uh, the leveling system I'm gonna put in. Just thinking to myself how nice it is here on the weekends. Um, we share a factory unit with four other, uh, or three other um, uh, businesses. Obviously, we've got a mechanic here, we've got an importer up here, and we've got a joinery guy here. Um, these are great people, and uh, and sometimes you just can't do certain things when everybody else is working, like welding out in the open. Uh, this is an industrial estate, so luckily I can get away with welding uh, out in the open on a Sunday when there's just no one around, and, uh, and, and that's a, a great feature of uh, building your boat somewhere where industrial things are permitted. Um, I certainly wouldn't recommend trying to do it in a residential area. Uh, I don't know how uh, the guys do it, you know. I'm, I'm sure there's so much nimbyism goes on around this bloody world where no one wants it in their backyard and not in my backyard type of uh, complaints of going to council and things. So certainly, um, for me, building it in an industrial area has been one of the key features and, uh, and I've got the permission of the owner. So I'm just gonna tack these guys in place. Um, probably do a reasonable weld on it. I might come back another day because I'm running out of daylight and it looks like it's gonna slash down. Seems they've got some weight in it. Okay, so they're all done. 
Done one, two, three, four, ready to flip it over. Thank God for that. So that's it for another week, uh, fellas. And I, th I think it dawned on me the other night, I was uh, sitting at home on my phone answering all the comments that had come through. I think I had about 200 comments on the last video. Um, offering advice and asking questions about the future and uh, and how I'm going to deal with the logistics as, as I go forward. And I, I, it dawned on me that it might be a good idea to do a bit of a Q&A video. Um, I can sit down and physically answer stuff that comes through to me early and uh, and give it some thoughts. So I'm not sort of firing off crap as I think of it, um, which is sometimes often better. But what dawned on me was the fact that these videos are almost cutting out 90% of, uh, of the actual build um, as I go forward and, and obviously there's questions that need to be answered um, about uh, how I'm going to deal with the deck mould, when I'm going to demold the hull, uh, when I'm going to put modules in. You can see here there's plenty of uh, templating and stuff going on here. Uh, right now, so it might be a good time for me to uh, nip some of those in the bud and, and, and fill a couple of you in on on, uh, on my line of thinking because uh, you know people out there are, are thinking differently to me and uh, and it, yeah I mean I, I give stuff a lot of thought before I go forward and uh, and it might be a good idea if you can give some give me some questions in the comments section or even go on to my life on the mold Facebook site um, Facebook messenger the uh, the um, question and, uh, and and then I'll deal with it in a video and uh, and try to bring you guys into the project a little more because unfortunately uh, the videos I've, I've got to try to keep them under 20 odd minutes because they're just epics and 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 that way I can uh, you know try to uh, to cover stuff that's not being covered uh, directly by the video so if you like the episode please give this a like and uh, I promise that there's no more welding for some time and I know it's been a bit of a not life on the mould uh, video recently, but that is part of the logistics I'm doing here. And then don't forget to subscribe. If you haven't already subscribed, subscription makes me uh, realise that there, there are people out there that really want to watch this. And, uh, and, and it'd be great if you subscribe because then you'll get my notifications of anything that's coming up uh, straight away. And I'm trying to do the videos more regularly. I'm trying to cut them down a little bit too so I can do them more regularly because the editing time is really starting to cut into this build big time. And, uh, and obviously personal time as well. Not that I complain about it because it's a great hobby and, uh, and I'm into it. So please, um, you know, feel free, give me a like and subscribe and I'll see you next time on Life on the Mole. Catch you later. Yeah.